If you're curious to know what to do from where with which wedge, say that five times fast, I'm here to help. So keep watching this video. We're gonna go through all the important shots you need to know around the green and what club to use from each situation. and a pitching wedge. So it's very important that I assess my lie, look at my shot, and then choose the club that fits the shot that I want to I'm gonna play. take you through my decision-making process for shot number one. So here we have a fairway lie. This is about four yards off the green. It's a tightly mown area. It's a little wet and dewy today, and I have some top soil on the ground in front of the ball. So I would normally decide to probably putt this ball if it was drier and I knew I had a really good predictable run through the fairway to get the ball onto the green and rolling. Why? Because of this rule of thumb, putt when you can, chip when you can't putt and pitch only when you have to. So this would fall into the category of a putt or next best choice would be a chip shot. And I'm gonna choose a basic bump and run chip shot here because I wanna get the ball up over this little rough patch in front of me onto the green and rolling. And I'm gonna choose for this shot a pitching wedge. The reason I'm gonna choose my pitching wedge is because I have a lot of green to work with between the ball and the hole. So I'm going to set these other two down and now that I've chosen what kind of shot I want to play, chosen the club that fits the shot and the lie, I think I am ready to start making some practice swings. Now this is a very important part of the process. You have to feel the shot with the club you've chosen. So I'm seeing the shot, I'm feeling whether it's a small, medium, or long version of the shot that I want to play. I'm gonna say this is small to medium. I need about 25 to 30 feet of roll once this ball lands. Uh, however, because it's a pitching wedge, it's naturally gonna roll out. And I have a little downslope. This is super easy. All you have to do is play the ball back in your stance, lean to the green. You can see how narrow my feet are together and how low I'm holding the grip of the club. The reason for this is I'm close to the golf ball. So if I stand sideways for you, you can see I'm very close to the ball, I'm not way out over here as I would be for a full swing pitching wedge. So I get nice and compact with my setup, lean to the green with my body and the handle. I'm not way out in front of my body, just a little ahead of the golf ball. And now I can ensure the ball is going to bounce and roll and tumble forward and not check up on me unexpected. I'm going to aim a little right of the flag to play the slope and think about what it was gonna take for about a four yard carry. Perfect. What I like about this shot is it helps to really pick the ball clean off a tight lie, and if it's wet, this is a really good choice because the club won't dig into the ground too much when you set it up this way. So if you're looking for a nice solution for those green side shots where you have this kind of a lie and you have some green to work with to roll the ball out, choose a pitching wedge, or even a club that has less loft. If I had a shot even longer than this, maybe twice as long on a link style course, or uh, maybe the pin was really on the opposite side of the green all the way across, I could use something like an eight iron, a seven iron, or even a hybrid to accomplish the same thing. It's just that that club selection is gonna give me even more roll. So in terms of sticking with wedges, I think a true pitching wedge is a nice choice for this shot. Now it's time to move on to shot number two. This shot is sitting in the rough on a slight upslope and I have a little hill to contend with, plus of course this patch of rough to carry. So I'm visualizing a medium trajectory shot that lands on the green a few feet and then rolls the rest of the way. Remember, putt when you can, chip when you can't putt, pitch only when you have to. So I don't wanna pitch this shot, which would mean a really high lobby type shot, if I don't have to. I don't wanna hit it higher than necessary. So with that said, a pitching wedge is an option, but when the ball lands on the green with a pitching wedge, it's probably gonna roll more than I want it to. So 
I'm gonna choose my gap wedge, my 52, and I think this is the perfect choice here. It's gonna help me manage the little bit of rough, but keep the club face square without having to open it or manipulate it uh, too much at all. It's gonna give me the lift I need to get it up and onto the green, but it's still gonna roll, particularly on an upslope. When you have an uphill lie, whatever club you choose is naturally sitting with a little bit more loft. So I kind of like this because again, it's still gonna give me probably effectively 56 degrees of loft. Uh, I am gonna still lean to the green on this upslope very slightly, but keep my body parallel with the hill so I don't chop down into the hill. I wanna swing with the slope and continue to rotate my body through with nice quiet hands. This is basically a chip shot, but we've changed clubs and We've changed ball positions. I'm gonna choose a slightly more middle to forward ball position now. Time to take some practice swings. I'm feeling the rough here near where the ball is to try to get a sense of how the club head feels as it goes through the grass. Is it a little sticky? Does it feel really smooth? And what kind of swing am I gonna need to put on this shot with what length and what amount of umph to get the ball onto the green where I see it landing? I'm seeing it land about four paces onto the green, which puts me probably at a total distance of about 40% of the shot. So I'm trying to hit this ball 40% of the way there. Perfect, it landed just on the spot I was visualizing. That's my gap wedge chip shot on an uphill lie. And I really like that combination for this because it helped me still maintain a nice medium trajectory without over flying it, without making it harder than necessary. And yet the ball didn't roll too far with something lower lofted, which would have been a little harder to hit out of the lie I was in. So taking all things into consideration, this was the right combination for me. Last but not least, I have a shot that requires me to hit it over a bunker to a downslope and a tight pin. So this requires a higher trajectory and the ball needs to land with a little bit of spin or chuck. This is a really fun shot that everybody wants to practice and wants to know how to do. And in competition, it's very challenging to do this when your nerves are firing. So I encourage you to practice this shot a lot and only use it when you absolutely have to. If you have another way of getting the ball on the green safely, if you have a beginner skill level, I would tell you to do that. So in this scenario, you could hit it to the left and dribble it down onto the green away from the bunker and you'd be perfectly fine and probably be able to two putt from there. If you wanna to try to get it tight, you have a little bit of risk, risk and reward. So it's your choice. You have to be confident enough to pull off this shot, especially off of a tight lie. So here we have a 58 degree wedge. You might have a sand wedge or a lob wedge. You can also use those. Um, it has a lot of loft already, so that's gonna give us the lift. But I'm gonna even open the club face a little bit more to ensure that the leading edge doesn't hit the ground and that I use the bounce sole of the club. That's the bottom sole of the club. And that's gonna make a nice little thump and allow me to catch this ball nice and crisply as I come through and not dig in the ground because that won't be good. I'll just end up in that bunker right there and I don't really wanna have to hit that bunker shot next. So through the setup for this shot, I'm going to set the club next to the ball, back up the handle and then move my body over to center myself to the golf club, which puts the ball towards the front of my stance. I'm gonna keep pressure on that front left thigh and then I'm gonna make a big enough swing with body pivot that keeps me on that front leg, turning to the target and keeping the club face open to the sky. So you can see at the end of the swing, the club face and my palm are facing up to the sky. I haven't released anything and I certainly haven't stopped my body and flipped the club through. Sometimes can work, but it's really not a good idea to do it that way. So keep your body moving through. I wanna feel that eight yard carry here, which is just to the edge of the green over the bunker so that it can just trickle down the hill really gently. And here we go. on it, get comfortable, 
and understand that the more relaxed you are and the better tempo you have, the less you try to scoop the ball and you let the club and your setup do more of the work, the better success you will have with this shot. interested in more short game videos from me, click on this playlist right here for one minute video tips. You'll see that there's a lot of chipping, pitching, and also some putting videos in there and drills that you can check out at your leisure. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great week and get out there and practice your short game and know how to use all the wedges in your bag for all the shots that you may face in your next round.